In this video, we will be discussing Action Text. So, Action Text has become available in the more recent versions of Ruby on Rails, and what it allows us to do is add styling to our content, so our forms. So, if for example, we have a simple blog application, it allows us to add styling to that body content, so we can add the bolded text or italic text, and even embed images and links within the content. So for the purpose of this video, we are going to create a very simple Rails application that uses action text to just get a feel for how it works and understand better how we can set it up. So on my computer, I have multiple versions of Ruby installed, and I do that using Ruby Version Manager. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to be using Ruby 2.6.3, and I will set up a new application that will use the Rails 6. So Ruby on Rails 6 is what we'll be using for this application. And we will set up a new app called Action Text Demo. And I will provide a link to the source code for this for anyone who's interested. You can get that link in the description below. And if you want to access more Ruby on Rails content, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video. And I also release content on my website. So I have a couple of courses on there at the moment, and there will be new courses coming in the near future. So check that out if you're interested in speeding up your learning of Ruby on Rails. So now we're just waiting for this installation to complete for our application. So now that our application has been set up, we can open up the directory, and then we will open that directory up in our code editor. So in this case, I'm using Atom, but you can open that in whichever code editor you're using. And I'm going to check the files into our version control. So using git, we can just commit the files, and it just keeps track of all the changes that we make. So now let's go back to the documentation. And we'll see at the top of this installation section, we have to run this command rails action text install. And once we run that, it will create some files for us. So right now it is downloading all the dependencies that we have for this action text. And once that's complete, we can have a look at this list of files that are created. So you can see here that we've got this style sheet, we've got a testing file, uh, we've got the view file for the blob. So this will be for our attachments. And we've got some appended JavaScript down at the bottom of this file, and we have a migration, two migrations actually created. So there are a lot of things going on here. So let's go back and have a look at what's been set up for us. So you'll notice here in our JavaScript pack file, we've got these two lines of code added for tricks and action text. So that's added automatically for us. And we'll notice in the installation instructions that we have to include a line in the style sheet. But again, this is already included in the require statement at the top. So we've got this line at the top already included. And then the next step is to add the rich text value into the model. So decide which model we're using, and we have to give a name for that rich text field. And it's worth noting here that we don't actually need to create a column in our table for this. So the rich text value does not need a column in our table. So before we continue too much further, let's create a default route for our homepage. And that way we can add some links to navigate and see this in action. So we'll set the default route to public controller. And we'll give it a action name of home. So we'll need to create that controller. So we'll just set up a new controller for that. And I'll do this manually, but you could actually use the Rails generate controller command. So we'll say class public controller, and this will inherit from the application controller. And then we will define a new action called home. And then by default, this will load a view from the folder called public. So let's create a new folder called public. And then we will create a file called home.html.erb. So this will be loaded by default once the user lands on the home page. 
And if we open up the database migration folder, you will see here that we've got two migrations that are pending. So this is for creating the tables required for our action text. So let's go ahead and run the rails generate command. So this time we're going to generate a scaffolding for the posts. So we're going to create a post table and a post controller and the views for that. So we can do that all together using the scaffold command. So we'll add a column called title and that will be a string. And then we will run the Rails DB migrate command to execute all these migrations that are in this folder. So now we have a new posts table in our database. And we have this new controller that will do most of the work for us in terms of creating the posts, editing, updating, etc. So if we look back at the documentation, the next step we need to take is to add this has rich text value to the model. So we'll add that to the post model and we're going to give that a name of body. So this is going to be the post body that has the action text styling. So then we also have to add this value to the form. So this is a rich text area field. It is a different column type or a different field type that we normally have from the form. So we normally would have a text area value for this, but using a rich underscore text area will give us the action text field. So we'll need to change this to body. And we can also add a label here for this. So this label will be body and the name of the field will be body. So you'll notice here that even though we have this body field in our form, if we look at the posts table, there is no column for this. So there is no body column so the name of that column and the value for that column will be stored in this action text rich text table. So that would be a value or a row in that table. So we don't need to worry about that column at all. We just give it a name and then we can store it. So as long as that name is set in the model, we are fine. So the other thing we need to do is to ensure that the field is permitted, that it is whitelisted, when we are saving our post. So if we go back to the controllers and open up the posts controller, at the very bottom we will see this post params and in here we will add the value of body. And there is also a helpful section here on the n plus one queries. So we can add this additional command when selecting multiple entries from the table. So that way that we are auto loading the values from the uh, action text table. So let's try this out now. So let's add a link to the posts uh, controller. So we'll add a link for the viewing all of the posts. And then once we're there, we'll be able to create a new post. So now we have this link and if we click on that, it will take us to the list view and then we will click new post. And we can see here that we've got all of these additional buttons directly above our text area field. We've got the bold, italic, strike through, link, heading tags and quotation marks. So we can add some dummy content here and test this out. We can also add bullet lists and numbered lists. So this is a very simple way to just have a editable text field that has some basic styling involved. So let's try out the numbered list. we can include a heading tag. So it doesn't let you pick what type of heading, but by default, there's just one heading size. And then we will include a standard bullet list. So again, you can style these from the CSS within your application. But we're just going for a really basic working version of this. 
So let's add some bold text, and we'll add some italic text just to test those out. And we'll give our post a title, and then we will save this. Okay, so this is our show view right now, but we can't really see the post body. So let's modify this. Let's go back to our views, open up the posts folder, and open up the show.html.erb. I will remove most of this boilerplate code. We'll just keep the title and we will keep, we will add a body section. So we'll put the title within a h2 tag delete these links and then we will output the post.body so by default it will get that value for us from the appropriate table and you can see here now that we've got all of the styling that we added and it looks pretty good actually you know it's a very simple example but it's a pretty good way to add some basic styling to your application and if we inspect this element, we can see that this is a h1 tag that's being created. One thing to note here is that if you want to add images to your action text column, then you're going to need to include this image processing gem. So I'm going to uncomment that and stop the Rails server. Then I will run the bundle install and start the server again. So if you have that installed, it allows you to attach an image. So this attachment button can be clicked we can attach an image and it automatically just embeds that image into the content. There are some default stylings that are set by action text and in this case the image is center aligned but we can modify that any way we want to later. So we'll look at how we can modify this in a few minutes but you can see here that this image has been attached and overall it looks pretty good and we can add as many images here into this content as we like. So there are some default styles here you can see. The text align is attached to this attachment preview class. So we have this action text style sheet in here then we can modify this as we need. So in this example I want to remove the caption that is underneath the image and I also want to fix the alignment so in this case, we can just move it to the left. To do that, we can open up a view within the Active Storage Blobs folder. So in here, there is a blob HTML file. So this file is loaded every time we have an attachment within our action text. And there are a few things that are different in here. You will notice at the top, there is this representable question mark. So this line of code is basically saying, if this is a image, we will give it the class of preview and then otherwise we'll give it the class of file. So this will also be used for attaching files. And then finally we will output the extension of that file type. So as we saw earlier, that preview class is what's being used to center align the image. So if we were to change that preview to something else, that alignment would be fixed. So directly underneath this, we have this resize to limit. And this is the reason that we needed to use the image processing gem in our gem file. So automatically, when this gets loaded, every image is resized based on this in gallery local variable. So we're not using this variable right now, but this will determine the size of our image. And then underneath this, we have the captions. So if there is a caption attached, it will output it, but you will also see that if there is no caption attached, it will output the file name and the size of the file. So we can see here that we've got the file name and the file type and the size of the file. Now these things are useful, but in our case, we want to remove this. So let's move this code up one line and we'll say that if it has a caption, we will display it, but then otherwise we just want to do nothing. So we can delete this bottom section. So now once we reload the page, the file details have disappeared. So now for the image alignment, we can just simply change this preview to a different class name. 
So that will just mean that there are no styles attached to that already. So that will default align our image back to the left. So you can add your own styles to these classes and even change the size of these images or the position on the page, allow text to wrap around the images. You can do lots of things with this, but this file is what is used when the attachment is called. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys have found Action Text helpful and you can use it in your own Ruby on Rails applications. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content. And I will see you all in the next video.